Hello everyone, it's Leah from Dime Culture, and in today's video, I'm going to show you the colors that are available in the Windsor & Noon Professional Watercolor lineup. Now, I purchased this dot card from a local art supply store on their website. I'll leave a link to it in the description below. When I first saw it on their uh, website, I was like, yeah, gotta get that. Because um, <laughs> I find painting color swatches and color charts and just doing basic color mixes and things like that to be very therapeutic. And instead of working in my sketchbook, I decided to make a gigantic poster of every single color available from Windsor & Newton. Not only is it gonna be pretty looking to have up on the wall, but also it'll be um, informational for me if I ever wanna buy a color from Windsor & Newton. And the activity of painting it gave me several days worth of me time where I was able to put music on and just relax. So painting this was really fun. Um, now I do want to go over the product itself. So there is a hundred and nine colors on this dot card and the paper itself has this little, um, informational grid info, uh, underneath every color. So it shows a square, S4, uh, B, and numbers. And above at the top, it explains what that is so you can decode it and understand some information about all the colors. Plus the back of it also has a bit of information about their paint itself. I wanna quickly touch on what I've done for editing this video. So then that way it's not a five hour long video for all of you to watch. <laughs> so what I did was I am going to show you the real time of me painting one of the color swatches to show you what I did and the process I took for painting it. Um, and then I'm going to speed everything up and cut and paste some stuff just to make the process a little bit faster for you. And so again, so you're not sitting here for five hours. Now, what I did was for activating the paint was put a little drop of water on each color uh, to just really help it out with reactivating the paint. And then I painted. So I used one paintbrush and I would put the color down on the square I made, on the grid I mapped out with tape. And then I also filled in the square that is provided on the dot card. And in between every single color, I cleaned my paintbrush like there was no tomorrow. It's very important that if you are gonna be doing color swatching like this of any brand, or even doing dot cards or color mixing in general, you wanna make sure that your paintbrush is clean. So then that way you're not cross contaminating the color and creating potentially muddy or inaccurate colors when you are looking at individual colors. It's very important when you're doing the individual thing like this. Okay, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna read down every single color in this first row and then give you some of my thoughts and then I'm gonna repeat that for every row that comes up, okay guys? So the first color in this row is Lemon Yellow Nickel Tinite. Tintint? <sighs> yeah, I'm gonna probably pronounce a lot of names wrong here. So yeah, that's life. Pronunciation is not my uh, talent in life. That's cool. That's cool, 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 cool. Next is bith bismuth yellow, cadmium lemon, cadmium free lemon, Windsor lemon, Windsor yellow, lemon yellow deep, aurelian, transparent yellow, cadmium yellow pale. Whew. Okay, so out of this row, because there are so many yellows that I find look very similar. It's a little disorienting when I was editing because I was like, did I already cut that one and paste it and put it into place? No, that doesn't look right. I had to count several times because they're very similar in tone. It's only the lemon yellow and then when you get to the Windsor yellow, lemon yellow deep, do you see really a variation in the colors? And I do want to say, in this row of colors, there's transparent yellow and it's ugly. I don't know how to describe it other than saying 
ugly and you're going to see it in a few minutes. Um, not a few minutes, like in seconds. Um, it's got this brown undertone and I'm not too sure why. So it's this color right here that's on the screen. Um, maybe this is a good color for mixing. Maybe it's a great color to create greens or something. I'm not sure. All I know is on its own, it's not one of my favorites at all. It's not a favorite. Ooh, also, um, as you can see, I took a break from speeding everything up. I wanted to pause like this moment for a moment to show you that the paper that is supplied for the dot card is a really nice paper. I'm not sure what paper it is because it's not listed anywhere in plain sight on this thing, but when you're using the paper and really going at rubbing that color, it doesn't break the paper and it didn't seep through at all onto what I was doing. So it's it's sturdy paper and the colors look really nice on it too. It really shows off the colors. Okay, so in this row of yellow to orange, we have the Cadmium Free Yellow Pale, Turner's Yellow, New Gambage, Cadmium Yellow, Cadmium Free Yellow, Windsor Yellow Deep, Indian Yellow, Cadmium Yellow Deep, Cadmium Free Yellow Deep, and Cadmium Orange. Okay, so for the new gambage color, when I first started painting it, I thought I was making a mistake. Like that, that Windsor Noon had accidentally put transparent yellow in the new gambage spot. Um, but then when I took a closer look, I could tell that there was a slight difference between the way the colors looked. New gambage has a bit of an orangier tone to the brown where the transparent yellow just has a yellowy brown tone to it um, but still they are so similar in color it was confusing because the Daniel Smith new gambage that I'm used to like I'm familiar with because I've used it before in the past is more of a yellowy orange color and it's kind of a rich tone so it looks very different from Windsor Noon's version and I was just thrown off by that um, now let's move on to the next row. It comes with the Cadmium Free Orange, Windsor Orange, Transparent Orange, uh, Windsor Orange Red Shade, Cadmium Scarlet, Cadmium Free Scarlet, Scarlet Lake, Red Cadmium, Cadmium Free Red, Cadmium Red Deep. Whew. Okay, first, before I get into the cadmiums, because uh, I wanted to mention that, I want to really quickly touch on their Windsor Orange Red Shade. <gasps> this is a beautiful orange. I feel like it is soft but vibrant at the same time. And if you mix in a little bit of pink, it would make for a beautiful color for flowers. Like, there are some orange uh, roses out there that kind of have this pink tone to it, and it's it's hard to mimic when painting and whew, yeah, I feel like that would be a great color to use as a base for doing florals like that. Now, um, onto the cadmium. Windsor and Newton has a lot of cadmium colors, but what's really nice is that recently they've been coming out with cadmium free versions so that it's less toxic. And I think it's amazing that they did supply both versions on this dot card. So you could really see how each one performs versus the traditional version and the new modern version because there are artists out there who use the cadmium version because the colors are really rich, beautiful, opaque, and amazing, but they don't feel comfortable using cadmium products like myself. I love the colors. I don't feel comfortable using the cadmium though and now that I can see that their colors are nearly identical um it's it's a game changer I mean I would prefer to buy the cadmium free version down the road when I'm done using the paint colors that I have okay now let me just go on to the next row that is being painted out right now um so the it's cadmium free red deep windsor red rose door quinacridone red windsor red deep Permanent Alizarian Crimson, Alizarian Crimson, Permanent Carmine, Permanent Rose, Rose Matter Genuine. In this row of colors, I'll take one of each, please. Like, oh my God. <laughs> this is just a beautiful row of reds. The Cadmium Red Deep is this nice, 
warm, almost orangey red, but red color. And their quinacridone red is this soft pink color. It's not a traditional quinacridone red in my opinion. And that's what makes it unique and beautiful. And um, okay. I'm a huge fan of Alizarian Crimson. I use it painting with my, um, my, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Acrylics. I recently just picked it up and I am in love with it. So, I mean, this Alizarian Crimson is also a very beautiful red and now I want it to, um, just beautiful. And the Rose Matter Genuine, you can't really see it in the small swatch, uh, dot card, on the paper but if you paint it out on a larger swatch like I did it has a really soft granulation and it's beautiful okay let's move on to this next one it starts with opera rose quinacridone magenta permanent magenta cobalt violet permanent mauve quinacridone violet ultramarine violet windsor violet which is also a dioxazine indithrone blue cobalt blue deep I don't know why it took me so long to say the word deep <laughs> um it's cobalt blue deep um in this row of colors you can they have several granulating colors so they have the cobalt violet permanent mauve a quinac uh ultramarine violet and the cobalt deep blue deep and the permanent mauve has this really rich granulation so there's it's a thicker granulation and I feel like it would be a great color to use um, when mixing in shadows to give depth to the shadows it's a really nice looking color and it's just beautiful I mean beautiful same with this indithrone blue when I was painting it on the 100% cotton paper it looks different than on the Windsor and Newton chart it's actually even richer and I loved it it's beautiful okay moving on to the next row of blues there is French ultramarine smalt Dunmont's blue Dunmont's that can't be pronounced right anywho ultramarine green shade cobalt blue windsor blue red shade antwerp blue antwerp blue that's a weird name for a blue color um and then there's prussian blue windsor blue green shade cerulean blue red shade cerulean blue now out of this blue lineup of colors each blue looks different than the next one and i'm such a fan of this like there are a lot of brands of watercolor out there and I have noticed that with so many brands that it's hard to tell which blue is which sometimes and when you're looking at their color charts you're like okay but this blue looks very similar to this blue like what's the point of having the one blue over the other blue where with the Windsor and Newton blues each one is different it has a different shade a different um, function does it stain does it granulate each one is different and I want every single one of them as well I mean I know I did not purchase this swatch card to go on a shopping spree but to relax but looking back at the chart seeing how the colors perform I can say I if I only had access to one brand of paint I know technically I would pick Daniel Smith because they have far more color options to choose from and I mean I'm just a fan of Daniel Smith paint, but if all I had was Windsor and Newton, I would be, I would be okay with that because these colors are beautiful, like 100% beautiful. Okay, now let's move on to the next row of colors because it's painting out right now and I got a little lost there on my saying these colors are beautiful. Um, so it is Meganese Blue Hue, Thalo Turquoise, aqua green cobalt turquoise light cobalt turquoise cobalt green deep cobalt green windsor green blue shade viridian and then windsor green yellow shade every single color here is really nice but i must say when i was painting out the viridian green it was really hard to reactivate this color and viridian green if you've seen any other youtube videos of watercolor artists using this color it's not an easy color to re-wet when from a dry state 
Now, I have experienced Viridian Green from um, Schmincke, and theirs actually rewets really nicely out of a pan. But other brands, it's hard. It's a it, it's a hard color, so it's hard to rewet. And I really did experience that while painting out this color swatch. Um, next in the green lineup is Terra Verda, Perillion Green, Oxide of Chromium, Hooker's Green, Permanent Sap Green, Olive Green, Terra Verda Yellow Shade, Green Gold, Yellow Na uh, sorry, Naples Yellow, Naples Yellow Deep. Um, out of these colors, the Terra Verda and the Terra Verda Yellow Shade, they performed very similar to the Viridian. They were a little difficult to re-wet at first, but then they did start performing like any other of the colors. And they're very soft and opaque colors. So, I mean, I wasn't expecting it to be a deep, rich color because of the chart that's provided underneath. It has the open square, which clearly states it is a transparent color. And they are beautiful, soft colors. I mean, they're nice. And these two colors that you're seeing right now, the uh, Naples Yellow and Naples Yellow Deep, beautiful. I mean, when you see them in next to the blues above, like those turquoisey colors above, it reminded me of a beach scene. And I was like, now I want to paint a beach or go to the beach. You know what? Maybe go to the beach. Okay, I'm going to move on to the next row of colors. It's Yellow Ochre Light, Yellow Ochre, Raw Sienna, Gold Ochre, Quinacridone Gold, Brown Ochre, Meganese Brown, Burnt Sienna, Red Light, and Viridian Red. In this row of colors, I had two issues because beautiful colors, all of them are very nice, but the Quinacridone Gold reminded me of a browner version of the new Gambage in Transparent Yellow. Now, they don't provide pigment information on this dot card. So I'm very curious to know whether or not they use the exact same um, colors, uh, like undertone pigment to make the colors because they look a lot alike. I feel like the Quinacridone Gold, if watered down, could look so much like the other ones. And the light red, it's labeled as being semi-opaque, but it was extremely transparent. Like, I mean, it was so transparent. It's, 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 there's no way it's semi-opaque. That's my opinion about this color. Though it is a very nice color. It's a very skin tone color. I feel like if you're an artist that does uh, a lot of portraits or buildings, like uh, architecture type paintings, this would actually be a really nice color for you guys. Okay, in the next lineup of browns, we are moving into the Indian Red, a Brown Matter, Potter's Pink, Perillion Maroon, Perillion Violet, Caput Mortem Violet. Caput Mortem Violet. Kind of sounds like a Harry Potter spell, if you ask me. Um, but that's a color. Um, it's And then the next one is Raw Umber, Burnt Umber, Van Dyke Brown and Sepia. Even though I can't pronounce the Caput Mortem Violet, it is a really nice opaque color. And it's kind of a um, redder brown tone type color, but I think it'd be great for landscapes or florals where you do twigs and branches attached to it. It is beautiful. And their sepia color here as well, it's a nice sepia. It's not the weird, cheesy, classic color that you see in a photograph where it's kind of browny yellow. It's more on the um, darker brown side where it leans more towards like a gray tone. And it's it looks really nice. It is listed as opaque, but it comes out transparent in my opinion that's okay. I'm not sure why it's labeled that way. But again, uh, dot cards can be a little misleading because there's not a lot of paint on the dark card sometimes. And that's what I'm finding with painting this out. Doesn't mean the colors aren't beautiful though. Okay, let's go to this last row of colors. It starts with indigo, then goes to Payne's gray, neutral tint, ivory black, lamp black, Mars black, Dave's gray, Chinese white, White Titanium Opaque White. 
All right, so we are about to reach the end of the video. And I know I created this color chart and purchased this dot card for the sole purpose of having some relaxation time, some art therapy time, you know, some me time. Um, and also to have a beautiful color chart up on the wall should it have turned out, which in my opinion, it did. Um, so even though I created it for my own personal needs, I am going to still provide a link to this color chart in the description below. So then that way, if you too would like to get your hands on this chart, it's there for you as a free resource. And as mentioned earlier in the video, I am also still linking to the dot card itself if you'd like to purchase it and do this activity on your own and spend some time relaxing and zoning out creating the color chart. Okay, now I definitely am about to run out of time. <laughs> so let's take a deep breath in. Let that air out. We are breathing in good energy, letting out the bad energy. We are recentering ourselves. Okay. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you so much for watching this video. If you have any comments or questions, definitely leave it in the comment section below. If you liked it, please give it a thumbs up. And if you are new here and this is content that you'd like and you're interested in healing with art, hit that subscribe button because that's what I do here. Okay. And until next time, everyone, stay magical. <laughs>